to City this week for more Cigar Talk. As hostess, Rebecca Blackwell meets the Tarano family. Widely recognized as one of the original families involved in the art of growing and processing the world's best tobacco. Used in the making of premium handmade cigars. Tour one of the Tarano factories on location in Nicaragua to see firsthand all the many steps that go into growing, preparing, and rolling cigars. Meet Carlos Tarano, his son Charlie Tarano, and his daughter Carol, and her husband Seth Levine, as we spend the next half hour of Cigar Talk with the legendary Taranos. Listen now as we join Carlos Tarano in a brief history of his family's story. Actually, Rebecca, the, uh, the story begins with my grandfather, Santiago, who as a young man came from Asturias in Spain to Cuba or to Havana in 1915. And in 1916 already uh, was introduced to the tobacco world. Uh, he opened his own company, uh, basically on the processing of tobacco. During short years, he became a grower and he financed a, a lot of growers also uh, in the 1920s and the 1930s. Uh, he was then joined by his sons, his three sons, Carlos, Jaime, and Pepe. And each of the sons were responsible for different parts of the regions that are so well known in the cigar world today especially the Vuelta Bajo region, where my father was responsible for the production of tobacco, and the Partido in Havana, where my uncle Jaime was responsible for that, age, for that section. Uh, in 1959, of course, when the revolution came, uh, the family left Cuba and came into the States. Uh, my father uh, went to the Dominican Republic, where he was a true believer that the, that the Dominican Republic had all the necessary soil and weather, uh, you know, to be a competitor to the Cuban cigars or to the Cuban leaf, and my my and my uncle went to Nicaragua, and some of the rest of, of the family members went to to Jamaica and to and, and to Honduras in order to show the people in those countries in how to grow tobacco and how to manufacture cigars. We soon realized about four or five years ago that we not only were involved in the production of leaf and tobacco and also in the production of cigars, but we needed to have our own brands. Uh, we, we needed to have the people recognize, uh, or I wanted the people to recognize the history of the Torano family in the, in the tobacco world, which had been recognized by the industry, but not by the public. And so we came out in 1994 uh, with our first brand which uh, was made in the Dominican Republic. Uh, we brought it out in the Dominican Republic because that's where my father uh, basically introduced the Piloto uh, filler, uh, was one of the main force in what is today recognized as a miracle of the Dominican world. Uh, and when he died in 1970, I had already uh, been involved a, a little bit with him in the Dominican Republic and I remember uh, all the hard work and, and the love that he had put into it. And so when we made our brand of tobacco, we decided that uh, the first brand should be on hi in his name. Uh, that brand today is very successful. It is distributed in the States. It's sold in England, in Germany, Switzerland, and, and in France. We then developed the Grand Nica cigar, which is a very beautiful cigar that is manufactured in our plant in Esteli in Nicaragua. Uh, which I think that you probably will be seeing very shortly when you go down there. It's, it's a beautiful operation. Uh, we grow our own tobacco. We process it. Uh, we grow our own wrappers. So you will see the whole history of the family in one country. We do the same thing also in the Dominican Republic. But I think you will have the chance to see the biggest operation that we have uh, in, in, in Esteli, well, we thank you for speaking with us now, and we hope you're enjoying the whole Tarano story and meeting Carlos Tarano. It's a real pleasure for us. It is my pleasure and you me. can't go away. You have to stay tuned because there's more. There's now, there's Nicaragua. It's waiting. Absolutely. It's awaiting us. We'll see you in a few days. <laughs> and we'll see you. Okay. Stay thank tuned. You. 
More conversation with Carlos Taranio later. But now, a visit to the Taranio Tobacco Farm in Nicaragua. We're back now, and after a short flight from Miami to Nicaragua, and you'd had an opportunity already to meet Carlos Taranio, and now we have Charlie Taranio standing beside me, and Charlie, I'm so happy to say that we're here in Nicaragua, we're here at the plantation. Well, welcome, welcome to Nicaragua, welcome to Esteli, uh, where we have our uh, wonderful factory of Nicoanos. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, we're standing in one of your premium best spots one of the almost beginning spots of the whole process of making a cigar and we can't wait to hear about it. Rebecca, we're in Esteli, Nicaragua. We're under shade grown tobacco. The tobacco under shade is being grown here and we're growing it basically for one of the finest wrappers really in the world. It's Cuban seed grown in Nicaragua and as you can see back here this tobacco is, is relatively young but it's been transplanted about 20 days ago in another 20-25 days we're going to be cutting this tobacco taking it to our curing barns uh, and thus begin the process of, of this tremendous Havana seed wrapper so that we can use it in, in some of the Toraño cigars. Well there are so many people that make it all happen and you have uh, a person here that well several people here that we want to meet who are part of your Toronto team and uh, tell us who they are some of our some of our partners here in Nicaragua uh, are some wonderful native Nicaraguans uh, who have you know between the three of them almost a hundred years of experience in tobacco uh, and more than that when you include their families and some of the gentlemen you'll be meeting are Ricardo Martinez, Fred Torres, and Leonel Saravia these are the three gentlemen that the Toranos work with here in Nicaragua to make some of the best cigars in the world. We have gathered with us now, as Charlie said we would, we've got Ricardo Martinez and we've got Fred Torres, and we have some technical questions for you since you're here all the time and this is your technical expertise. But uh, we were talking about the curing barn, Charlie and I were, and how important it is to get that fine premium tobacco. And I was hoping, Ricardo, you could ask Fredman about it. Dice que qué es lo que tiene las casas de curado de nosotros que son tan especiales para lo que es el, el tapado en lo que es la curación. Las casas de curación que nosotros construimos en esta finca son casas. What he's mentioned is that there is different types of drying houses. The drying houses that we have are especially for curing wrapper. The wrapper is a lot more delicate than, let's say, sun sun tobacco, which is on another field that we'll, we'll see later on. He says that the construction has different ventilations. You construct it in a way so you have different ventilations. If you have different temperatures in the, in the drying house, then you open the compartments in the bottom, you open the compartments in the top. It depends on what type of climate is in and what type of climate you need to, to get the curing a lot better than, than the normal tobacco. We thank you for joining us, and we're going to go meet with Charlie Taranio, and we're going to continue here. And we're here in Nicaragua, and there's more, so stay tuned. Charlie Taranio and I are making our point right now. Charlie Taranio is six foot three, <laughs> and can you find him with all these tobacco leaves here? Where are we, Charlie? Rebecca, we're still in Esteli, about a quarter mile from where we were before, but here's where we have our sun-grown tobacco as opposed to the shade grown, which we saw earlier. Uh, you know, the sun is setting, it's about 5 o'clock, uh, it's quiet out here, as you can see it's beautiful tobacco. Uh, this tobacco in about another 5 or 10 days we're going to start getting ready to cut it and start to cure it. Uh, but this is where I feel most at home, this is where I feel the peace and, and the romance of tobacco and cigars, here's where it is. And so, you know, we're excited and uh, I mean you can just see how beautiful this is here. I don't think it gets any more beautiful. Well, Ricardo brought over one of the tobacco leaves, which I'm holding up here. I, cause, can you see this? This is unbelievably big. This gives you an example of how beautiful this tobacco is. Rebecca, you can see not only the size, but the width of this kind of tobacco leaf uh, is just, you know, grade number one. It's beautiful, and it's great. And you might be using this for the wrapper, or will you be using this for the filler, or both? Most likely, a leaf of this quality will probably be made into wrapper, uh, but we'll know that after we cure it and select the, uh, and, and make the different grades. So, uh, my bet's on it being wrapper. Well, we have to leave here now before we do any damage to these beautiful leaves, but uh, this is really something. You, you have to see this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Here we are.
there with Charlie Tarano at the Cigar Box Factory. And uh, we've assembled here all the important people. And uh, Charlie, this is such an integral part of presenting your premium cigars. Tell us about your box factory. Uh, Rebecca, we're real proud also of our box factory. Um, the box factory is run by one of our great partners here from Nicaragua, Leonel Saravia. I know you've met some of our other partners. Uh, as you know, in cigars, one of the, the integral parts is the presentation of the cigar, uh, which we take a lot of pride in. Our boxes are all made of cedar. We make them ourselves. We purchase the cedar. Uh, we control, uh, again, the production of, uh, of the boxes, which then gives us uh, the ability to make different types of boxes. And so we've got here some of the different sample boxes boxes that we make. Some are a little bit more rounded, some are flatter, different designs, uh, and we can do that all through the masterwork of Leonel Saravia. And now we want to meet you, Leonel. How are you today? How are you, Rebecca? Very well. Thank you. Rebecca, muchas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Y el objeto principal de esta fábrica Quick translation, Leonel takes a lot of pride in his work. Uh, the boxes that he makes is primarily for the Toraño group and the Nicabano group as we're here together. Uh, a lot of people, and when they see the quality of boxes, the Toraño cigars then come and ask Leonel if he can make boxes for them. Uh, so he tries the best he can, but uh, the, Toraño, the Toraño group is, uh, is where our focus is in this factory. Well, let's take a look at some of your boxes here. This is a, this is a box. This is our Grand Nica box. Um, it, we make the cigar, again, here in Nicaragua. Another creation of uh, Leonel Saravia, and as you can see, it's a beautiful presentation. It's all cedar. This one, for example, unlike this one, this is the Carlos Toraño Nicaragua selection. It's all cedar, but it's natural. There's no paint on it, no varnish. This one, what we've done is we've added a little paint to it to add a little color. So we've got a, a variety of different options here. How does it go to the store? Does it go to the store like this, natural, and then so you have that selection in the store, the retail store? Absolutely. The Carlos Toraño Nicaragua comes in natural, but then this box factory has the, the ability also to paint the boxes. So for our other brand, the Grand Nica, we can paint it and give it a different color. So we have a variety of different options here. Charlie, we've really enjoyed being here at the Box Factory. I would like to know where are we going next and what do you think we're going to be uh, seeing? Well, now we're going to see the Cigar Factory, uh, where we make the Toraño cigars. There's a lot to see there. It's a beautiful factory, and I look forward to bringing you there. Okay, so now we're on our way to the factory itself, where we'll see all the workers working and the cigars being made. So join us. I'm surrounded now by Charlie Tarano and Ricardo, and we are at the processing plant, Charlie, and uh, this, boy, I wish you could all smell the tobacco here. It's wonderful. Intoxicating. It is intoxicating. You're right. I wish the smell can go through the camera. Rebecca, this is uh, where we age our tobacco. All of the tobacco you see in this room is, is grown by us, Nicabano and Toranos, uh, for the Torano cigars. Uh, this is probably the most critical part of the process, not only in the growing, but knowing how to age it right. Uh, the, here's where the fermentation process takes place. Here's where the tobacco reaches its flavor. Here's where it becomes uh, usable in a cigar. And at Toranos, what we require is just the finest cigar, the finest tobacco. And right here, the fact that, again, we control also the aging of our, of our cigars that ensures that our cigars, the tobacco isn't green, the tobacco isn't young, it's aged just perfectly. And it's aged perfectly, you know, thanks to our partner Ricardo Martinez, who runs this, uh, this processing plant. Um, and I'll turn it over to him. Okay, now Ricardo, come here a little closer to me and join in here. You have a temperature gauge down here. What's that all about? Okay, this is, first of all, I just want to make sure that we know that the technician that's got about 20 years of experience is the one that handles this with his He's standing hand. behind us right now, right? He's, he's got so much experience on this, and that's you, you need somebody 24 hours a day on this because we're constantly flipping the tobacco depending on the temperature until eventually after two months of being here, then he decides when he can send it to the, to the cigar factory. Now, one of, just one of the many parts of the technical parts of this is the temperature gauge. We, we have these temperature gauges. And we're taking it out from down. It's, they're kept right down here with the yes. tobacco. There's a box. There's a small box where this slides in, and it goes all the way in the middle, in the middle of all this tobacco, and it keeps the temperature. And he has to look at this every half an hour, every hour, and make sure that once, once, the, once the temperature gauge is at where he wants it, then he flips it all over. On, onto another stand, and then that's how, that's how he decides when it's ready to go. Well, I have to say, I think we're beginning to really respect 
this industry and uh, to see what goes into it. So, Charlie, thank you very much, and let's let's move on to the next process. Fantastic. Many people are here at the factory and the final touches are being put on these hand-rolled premium cigars, the Tarano cigars. Charlie, we have a girl in front of us here who specializes in rolling hand, handmade cigars and I, I would like you to describe the whole process. Well, here we make the Carlos Torano Nicaragua selection in the Gran Nica. Uh, and it doesn't matter how many times I'm at the factory, every time you watch what they do, you realize how absolutely specialized and technical it is because we're constantly training people on how to make cigars. Uh, and as you see, what she's doing now is she's putting the wrapper uh, on the cigar. The cigar has already been bunched. The binder has been put around the filler, and so she's now putting the finishing touches where she is r putting the wrapper around the cigar, making the final cut. It's then put on the table, and later what we do is uh, supervisors come, we'll check for the quality, make sure that the bunch is fine, uh, make sure that it's not too tight, that it's not too hard or too soft, that there's just the right amount of tobacco. Um, but basically what we do here is this is where we roll the cigars, this is where we bunch the cigars, this is where the Torano process in some respects gets completed because from here we'll take it to the packing department and they'll pack it, put it in the, in the gorgeous Torano labels and, and takes it off. But to me, it, it, I cannot, only the camera can show you. It, it looks easy, but really, folks, it's not. This is something you do a lot of training for. Well, we can't leave the Torano factory here and uh, without meeting the Tiger Woods of cigar making. He's with us now. And Charlie, we're asking you to make the introduction. Rebecca, with me here is Raul Disla. Raul Disla is a fellow who's been in the tobacco business literally since he's five years old. So he's got a good 15 to 20 years of experience. And so he may look young, but in the tobacco world, we in the Torano family know few people uh, that is really as experienced as Raul Disla. And so he is one of the gentlemen that is in charge of ensuring the quality of the Torano cigars, of helping to manage the factory, literally from the treatment of the tobacco all the way through the final packaging of the Torano cigars. So we feel real fortunate to have Raul Disla with us. Um, and you're right, when you called him the Tiger Woods of Cigar, uh, I think you hit it right on the head. If he could re receive that award, he would. Yeah. Well, listen, Raul, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Unfortunately, Raul doesn't speak English. If not, he's got a lot to say. Uh, but another time. And Ricardo's going to join us now. Ricardo has a box of the finished cigars. After they've gone through the process here, Ricardo, after they go through the process here, what happens in the final packaging? Okay, right now they finish rolling the cigar. They send it to where there is another aging process which stays around 30 days in the warehouse and it ages and sometimes it even goes to 60 days depending on how much you want it aged. Even so, after they do this process here? Even after they do this. We age them for another 30 or 60 days depending on what the Toranos ask for. After that, then we, st we bring the bundles to the packing area where's, where the final stage is and they choose the different colors of the wrapper and then they put them in their box. And let's this open is, up this box now this here. Is, we'll show it to the camera here. This is a present that we want to make for, for your team. And this is something that and we will gladly accept after seeing all these cigars being rolled and made and packaged and processed. You can see that the Toranos have made beautiful designs and as you see the colors and, and the box and everything that we've gone through all, all these days together, this is finally ready to be shipped to the United States. That must be just such an exciting feeling as you have these boxes lined up, packed in the trucks, ready to go. That's, that's when, that's when <laughs> that's we... The that, final moment. That's when we get the benefits. Or is the best moment when you light up that Torano cigar? <laughs> well, the best moment is when the Toranos are happy of what we sent them. Okay, well thank you, Ricardo, and thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you.
What an entertaining tour. Stay tuned now as we return to Miami for more with Carlos Tarano and the Tarano family. We're back here with Carlos Tarano and and we're going to ask you some questions now, Carlos. Uh, I've had so many people ask me if I would please bring them some Cuban cigars. And um, so I want to ask you, did your dad, we were talking about your dad and the history of the Tarano family, how does that Cuban seed work in there? Did he have the original first Cuban seed? Well, actually, uh, my dad, I guess, was one of the originals uh, when he left Cuba in 1959, 1960. Uh, we were probably one of the biggest growers in Cuba. So we had incredible amount of seeds that the family took with them when they came into the States. Seeds that today are being grown in the Dominican Republic, some seeds are grown in Honduras, some seeds are grown in Honduras, I mean in Nicaragua. Uh, we were very much one of the main sources of this country to get the Cuban seed. Your father went directly to the Dominican Republic and I think you were telling me that when when he died it practically killed the uh, cigar industry there or uh, did. Actually what happened is that my father was a major force in introducing the filler that is recognized in the market today as the best filler, the Piloto filler. Uh, which is used probably in 95 percent in all of these cigars that are manufactured in the Dominican Republic. But my father was in the Dominican Republic between 1965 and 1970 when he died. He was probably the major force. When he died in 1970, basically the whole industry died in the Dominican Republic. Uh, I tend to think that it has to do maybe with the strength that my, f that my father had and not uh, you know, because of the market, but for about 10 years the Dominican Republic almost disappeared from the market until 1979 when after the Sandinista revolution in Nicaragua which had become the alternative to the Cuban cigar and tobacco when the Sandinista came into power the market started to look someplace else to make cigars and to grow tobacco. Honduras was very close to Nicaragua so they were very concerned that the revolution would spread to Honduras so most manufacturers went to the Dominican Republic. And 1980 really is the beginning of the Dominican miracle. <laughs> okay. And what a miracle we're having today, too. Absolutely. You know, today it is recognized, I think, worldwide that the Dominican makes about the best cigars in the world. And of course, that's where we made our first cigar, because we wanted to name it basically in my father's name, who was basically the major force of the tobacco that was grown in the Dominican Republic. So we came out about three years ago with the Toraño brand from the Dominican Republic, which has been very successful, very well accepted. It's a beautiful cigar made with a Connecticut wrapper. Uh, it is recognized as one of the finest cigars in the market now. Uh, we then moved to Honduras and came out with the Virtuoso, especially because I myself have been involved directly more time in Honduras and in Nicaragua. So after I made a cigar, after my name in the Dominican Republic, we created factories in Honduras and in Esteli. And in there we, we came out with two brands, or three brands. The Virtuoso brand from Honduras, the Gran Nica from Nicaragua, and the Toraño Nicaragua Selection Cigar. All of these cigars are distinctive one from the other. They use different fillers, different wrappers, and different binders. Each one has its own taste, very unique to each one of them. Each one is a very high premium and a quality cigar. As good, I hope, as the best cigars in the market. Uh, I, I think that if, if, if you were to take m most of the major brands and you would put the Toraño in, in conjunction with the rest of the brands, I think most people will probably pick our cigars. Uh, it, we have only been in the market for two or three years. We have been very successful in the cigar production. Of course, the family has been known in the tobacco world by the trade industry as being one of the original families of tobacco. Basically, the Torano name is 
synonymous with tobacco worldwide. Uh, we sold our tobacco to all the European countries, to the manufacturers in Europe, to the manufacturers in the state, to the manufacturers in Central America. So most people in the trade knew who we were. And so we decided to come out with our own brands to be able to establish the Toranio name not only in tobacco, but in cigars. And this is where we are right now. We are producing, I think, some of the finest cigars in the market now. Well, we thank you for speaking with us now, and we hope you're enjoying the whole Tarano story and meeting Carlos Tarano. It's a real pleasure for us. And you can't go away. You have to stay tuned. There are members of the Tarano family that you have not met, but they are here with me tonight. I'm at the Capitol Grill, which is an upscale steakhouse that's very cigar-friendly. It's right here in Miami on the river. And we're sitting in here in one of their lounges right now. We're about to meet Seth Levine, who is the president of Tarano Cigar, and his wife, Carol. And Carol happens to be the daughter of Carlos, who you met earlier on the tape. And then you also met Charlie and this is the sister of Charlie so or we could say Charlie's your brother <laughs> either way and I'm going to begin with Carol you have been a member of the Tarano family for your whole life uh, okay so would you give us through your own viewpoint how you feel about the history of the cigar making and how it's gone for you as a member of the family um, actually, my family's been in the cigar business um, in one form or, no or another since about 1916. My great-grandfather in Cuba actually began in the leaf business and then went into the manufacturing in end of the business. And my father now, for about 10 to 15 years now, he's basically been manufacturing and actually selling to distributors. And about two and a half or three years ago, we decided that we thought that we should you know, be making brands, you know, of our own and actually distributing them ourselves. And my husband, Seth Levine, could tell you a little bit about each of our five brands. Well, I think that's a good idea. Let's, let's come over here to you, Seth. Uh, we want to learn the names of the brands and uh, bring us up to date on the future of the Tarano Group as well. What, you know, what you're doing now and what you see. Okay, Rebecca. Well, the first brand that we came out with, as Carol said, about three years ago was the Carlos Tarano Dominican Selection. And the reason we chose the name Carlos Tarano was in honor of Carol grandfather who really was the pioneer and really was the sole individual that was first responsible for bringing the Cuban seed from Cuba and successfully growing it in the Dominican Republic. Tell us all the aspects of the business. We are growers, we are manufacturers, and now we are distributors. I guess the only thing that we're not doing is actually retailing the cigars. Um, so this is, I think, the most exciting part of the business because we get to interact each and every day with well over 1,000 different retail customers not every day, but that's that's our entire base, and that to me is the is the best part of the business because we're dealing with so many different people and personalities, and uh, and that's the most exciting thing about it. Well, you know, let's just review one more time the names of the cigars that we will be looking for from the Tarano family. The, again, the Carlos Tarano, our first brand, the Carlos Tarano Dominican Selection, is a, it has a Connecticut wrapper, a Mexican binder, and a uh, Dominican, a Cuban seed grown in the Dominican Republic is in the filler. And our second brand, the Virtuoso, is again a very complex cigar. It's got the, uh, in the filler, it's a Honduran, Costa Rican, and Nicaraguan, so it's a very complex cigar with an excellent Cuban seed grown in, the, grown in Ecuador wrapper. So it's, it's very nice. And then our two brands out of Nicaragua are primarily Cuban seed grown in Nicaragua, but we've got different wrappers. We've got one wrapper from Sumatra and one wrapper from Indonesia, uh, as well as the Havana Cool. So it's really a very uh, different array of cigars, ranging from a mild-bodied cigar to a medium-bodied cigar. We really don't have anything that's very, very strong. It's really the good life, and uh, now you've met the family members from the Tarano family, and you've learned about the names of the cigars that the Taranos are making. We've had a wonderful time spending it with the Tarano family and meeting all of you, meeting your father, your brother, and yourself. Thank you we much. thank you for joining us and telling us uh, your historic story about cigar making. And Seth, uh, good luck to you as you uh, continue with the Tarano name and carry on making probably more and more brands. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, and thank you, Carol. This concludes the legendary Tarano story for our Cigar Talk segment. 